Hi folks, welcome back to Physics with Captain Rod. The purpose of this video is to just give another example here of how to uh, find the total displacement uh, given a velocity graph and how to find the average velocity um, over a time interval. So first of all, let's talk about this, average velocity. So average velocity is delta x over delta t. If we have a delta t, and in this case we do, this time interval looks like it goes from 0 to 25 seconds, all we need is the total delta x here. We take the total delta x, divide by the delta t, we'll have the average velocity. So most of this problem boils down to this, finding the delta x, the total displacement during the 25 uh, seconds. Now, a lot of the problems in textbooks tend to look uh, really nice and neat. They have nice perfect lines and where things change, it's real well defined. I kind of hand drew this, I did this kind of deliberately. It's important to realize that you know velocity curves are never perfect I mean they're they're very rarely do you have a curve where the velocity is perfectly constant or perfectly linear you know most velocity curves have you know some sort of other type of curvature here so I hand drew this what we're going to do is we're going to go through and work this problem using approximations uh, that are appropriate so Again, where this curve comes from, not important. The purpose of this video is how to use this curve, this velocity curve, to get the uh, change in position. Now, hopefully you've seen my previous video here. The change in position, or your displacement, can, uh, can be calculated by the area under the curve. So what we need to do here is calculate this area, all of this, bound up under this curve here. So I'm going to take this and divide it into pieces before I move on here. All right, so I'm going to look at this first piece out to maybe about here. I'm going to call this just piece one here. And then this region from one to maybe about here. Looks like that's pretty much right under the 10. And then from here to maybe here. And then uh, this last piece, I'm going to call this piece two, piece three, piece four. Now, you notice that, you know, when I broke this up, I didn't really worry about whether we're talking here or here. I just kind of went kind of in the middle here. Same thing here. I just kind of took this region here and I just kind of divided it, you know, so it's a little bit of curvature on the left, a little bit on the right. Same thing here and so forth. Now what I'm going to do is just make some approximations here. This, although it may not be perfectly a rectangle, it's pretty darn close, so I'm going to approximate this as a rectangle. This may not be a perfect trapezoid, uh, but I'm going to go ahead and approximate it as a trapezoid. I could also divide this up into a rectangle, uh, and a rectangle and a triangle, but I like to use the trapezoids. And then I'm going to approximate this as a rectangle and approximate this as a triangle. So I'm going to go through now and just write out in one line here, all right, delta x equals, and I'm just going to write one, two, three, four terms and then add them together. Okay, so uh, area number one, this area right here, approximating that as a rectangle. The height looks like about 10 meter per second. The width, now it's, it's a little bit to the right of five. We might call it six or seven. I'm going to go ahead and call this 10 meter per second times, and I'm going to have to guesstimate this a little bit, maybe six seconds, approximately. Somebody else might put 6.5, or somebody else might put seven. I doubt it's not seven. I'd say that's about six. This product should give us a pretty good estimate for the area, that rectangular area. All right, next one. All right, now this geometry is a trapezoid. So if you unfamiliar or if you're not familiar with calculating the area of a trapezoid, somewhere uh, uh, probably under uh, the be very beginning of my physics page, uh, there'll be a video on how to calculate the, the area of a trapezoid. But basically, this is it. It's one half the base. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, let me let me state it like this. If I were to go to the middle of the trapezoid and basically make a rectangle out of it, this rectangle has the same area as the trapezoid. Notice I could cut this piece and glue it right there. It basically would be the same. Area of a rectangle is length times, uh, well, length times width. The only trick is you got to calculate the length. Now you notice that this length is shorter than this distance, longer than this distance. In fact, it's halfway between them. So basically it's the average. So again, if you haven't, uh, if you're not unfamiliar, if you're not familiar with trapezoids, go back and review my video on area of a trapezoid. So that thing's area is going to be one half. Now this looks like about 10 meter per second, plus now it's about 18 meter per second. And again, one half times this product is the average of these two lengths 
times this distance. And we said this was 6, so that's got to be uh, basically 4 um, seconds. So this product right here should give us an approximation for the area of that trapezoid. Next one. Now this guy right here is a rectangle. Let's see the length, 18 meter per second. Times the width. Now, this is five. This looks like maybe, that may be about 18, so that's maybe three more. So I'm going to call that eight, that distance right there. Again, somebody else working this may call that 8.5, somebody else 7.5. That's kind of splitting hairs. The purpose of this video is to just demonstrate how to find the area. I'm going to call that about eight uh, seconds. So that gives the uh, area of the rectangle, area three. Last one now, this area, that's a triangle. Area of a triangle is one half the base. Now, let's see, I said that was, what did I say that was? Um, eight, so I said that was three, so that's about two and five more. So I'm, I'm gonna say that's about seven. So one half, seven seconds times the height, 18 meter per second. My computer doesn't like me writing on the edge here. 18 meter per second, close that off. So again, the idea here, I'm treating this like it's constant. It, it approximately is, it's not exactly, but it's close enough. I'm treating like this is a pretty much a line. It doesn't matter that there's a little curvature here or here treating this like it's uh, constant velocity because it approximately is. And again, I'm treating this like it's linear. Again, it approximately is. I'm gonna go ahead now and take a moment and pause this while I run, a, run my calculator through and get a value for this. All right, I'm back. I went ahead and did this piecewise. Again, this product 60 meters. This is looking like 56 to me, 144, 63 meters. If you find there's a mistake in there, email me, let me know. But uh, for right now, that's what I believe it comes out being. Now, when you get good at a calculator, you know, eventually, if you get some practice, you can just type this in one line here and get 323 meters out of that. I went ahead and did it kind of piecewise. I noticed that students really like to break those up into pieces, and there's nothing wrong with that. Looks like about 323 meters is the displacement represented by this graph uh, from t equals zero to 25 seconds. And now to find the average velocity, we'll take our total displacement, 323 meters, divide by our total time, 25 seconds. And I get approximately 12.9 meter per second. So I uh, hope this video demonstrates how to find um, a total displacement from a velocity graph by using concepts of area and how to find it, the average velocity during the time interval. Have a great day.